Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where one of our testers has alerted me to the fact that there is a new Zetamath Sudoku called Crosswalk, and that's exactly what I'm going to have a go at. Um, I have no idea how difficult it is. Um, Zetamath puzzles are normally, hmm, I would say, on the harder side of average difficulty, but this could be absolutely monstrous or it could be a breeze. Um, it hasn't had enough um, solves yet on Logic Masters to have a rating at all. Although there was a, a comment from Pier Tato, I think, saying that this is an absolutely brilliant puzzle. So I, I'm not surprised by that in the, in the least. I don't know how many times Zetamath has appeared on the channel. It's a lot. And every single time uh, the puzzles have been very clever and have always made me smile. So I, ex I expect nothing less from the great man today, and I will read you the rules of this one in a moment or two. You can see that um, apparently Zetamath has been working with Sandra of Sandra and Nala fame to create a slightly different colour scheme, um, which apparently is uber colourblind friendly. So if you do suffer from colour blindness, do let us know whether these colours are better than the classic colours we use for sort of green lines and region some lines and I guess these are Renban yeah it looks like these are Renban so um, yeah let, let us know what you think of this this palette um, now do I have any news for you today I've got some birthdays to talk about which I'll do in a moment or two we are streaming tomorrow night Islands of Insight. I'm uh, preparing myself mentally for uh, the, the motion sickness that may emerge, but I'm really looking forward to trying that game. So i uh, love to have your company if you're around. The only other news is over on Patreon, there is a whole stack of extra content at the moment. There's our monthly competition, which is a Sudoku hunt themed around negative constraint puzzles called Evening Attractions. Lots of you are getting stuck into that, unsurprisingly, and the feedback so far has been great. So do check it out. If you haven't had a look at it, you've still got till the 20th of the month to be in with a chance of winning the competition. Um, and then we've got My Solve of Emre Glue's Region Geometry. That's not for the faint-hearted. If you like very hard puzzles or very, very long puzzle videos, that will be for you. And we've also got um, uh, my crossword video talking about uh, Dean Mayer's recent puzzle that appeared in the Sunday Times. And I know that's a bit more specialist, but I I'm pleased to say that some people have been watching that and really liking it. So agreeing, I think, with the cleverness of, of the clues in that puzzle, which were stellar. Um, right, let's do some birthdays. I'll start with saying a very happy birthday to Dakota. This is from your good friend Nick, who wrote a, just a glowing email about you, Dakota, um, telling, telling us that you were there for him at a very dark time in his life, even though you hardly knew him at the time. And I think that was about five years ago. Um, he described you as a great friend, a fantastic mum, and an exceptional human being. And although you live across the country from each other now, you're only a text away. And he hopes that you're able to celebrate your birthday today with a good vegan chocolate cake recipe. So many happy returns, Dakota. Uh, it sounds like you are and indeed an exceptional person. And um, I hope you have a great birthday. Next, we'll turn to Michael. Um, now, your older brother, Joshua, wrote to us, Michael, to tell us you're turning 41 today. And and the two of you, I think, discovered the channel independently, um, but you both enjoy it. And Michael, you have started setting video, or setting Sudokus, I should say, themed around sort of childhood memories, um, which is well, what a lovely thing to do. <laughs> so Michael, many happy returns. I hope you have chocolate cake, obviously. And then finally, somebody who won't be having chocolate cake, but might be having lemon pound cake, which is probably just about acceptable. Sam, Sam's turned 21 today. And I know this because your sister January wrote to us, Sam, and said that you'd appreciate the shout out. So many happy returns. I hope your lemon pound cake comes with a suitable ratio of icing uh, <laughs> to cake. One to one, of course, at least. Um, and with that said and done, we can get on with some solving. Let's have a look at what crosswalk by Zetamath is all about and I will read you the rules we have got normal Sudoku rules apply digits along a pink Renban line form a set of non repeating consecutive digits in any order so if this if this line had a one on it 
then we would know that this line had to contain one, two, three, four, and five, and those can be in any order we like, so that would be an appropriate, appropriate possible order. Um, digits do not repeat along gold NABNA lines. Additionally, no two digits appearing anywhere on a NABNA line can be consecutive. E.g., if a line contains a two, there cannot be a one or a three anywhere along the line. So we've seen these creatures before. They are quite difficult to get your head round um, unless they're five cells long. And unfortunately, none of these seem to be. So basically, let's imagine, yeah, what did it was the example? If there was a two on the line. Now, because we can't have a consecutive digits anywhere along the line, none of those three digits could be a one or a three. That's how napners work. Um, now, next line type is adjacent digits along a green line must differ in value by at least five. So these are normally called German whispers lines. So imagine this square was a one, then this square here would have to be at least equal to six because it must be at least different by five uh, from one. So it could be six, seven, eight or nine. That's how green lines work. And then finally, box borders divide the blue line into segments with the same sum. So what that's telling us, we've only got one blue line, it's telling us those two digits there, the sum of these two digits is the same as the sum of those three digits, is the same as the sum of those two digits. So if these add up, added up to 15, these would add up to 15, and these would add up to 15. And that's all the rules. Do you have a go? The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. The first thing I can see is that there must be a five on that line um, because this is a set of consecutive digits. And if you imagine the digits one to nine laid out before us, so we're going to slice five consecutive digits. If we started with the one, we'd still get to the five. But if we started with the nine, we'd still get to the five going downwards. So there must be a five on here. Um, now, the other, the other pink lines, unfortunately, are not long enough to uh to need a particular digit on them i'm scared of the nabna lines i don't really want to think about those so perhaps we think about the german whispers so german there are a few secrets to know about german whispers lines so i'll just trot through those quickly the first of course maverick has taken off maverick is getting ever more regular again literally the moment i start recording the last few days there's been the, the whirring of um, Maverick's propeller uh, buzzing past my window. Anyway, the um, you can't put a five on a whispers line, and that's because if we try and put five on it, the next digit is impossible because it needs to be at least five different from five. And if we go upwards, we run into digits that aren't Sudoku digits like 10 and higher. And if we go downwards, we get to zero or lower. So that won't work. And that means that each digit that we do put along a German whispers line has a property of either being below five or above five. And the interesting thing is that if it's below five, the next digit can't also be below five because these two digits could not be five apart, even if we made them as different apart as we could. In other words, the lines oscillate like this. Now, obviously, the problem is we don't know. We don't know whether we're starting with a high or a low digit here. But, but we do know that those two digits will have the same polarity. So they will both be either high or, oh, hang on, I have to think about my color choices a bit here. Uh, maybe I'll go orange, mm. although that, that, that has an implied lowness about, no, an implied highness normally, for hot digits are normally high, aren't they? Oh, um, gray, <laughs> gray, that's unambiguously, um, sort of not saying anything so we'll have gray and maybe red so we know that the red ones are either both low or both high and the gray ones are both light both low or both high the same is going to be true here but the problem here is that we can't although we could shade this line these two have to have the same polarity so they're either both going to be high or both going to be low we can't really relate it to to the shading there. I mean, obviously these are going, to, what, if these were low, we'd have used up three low digits in the row. 
If they're high, we'd have used up three high digits because we know this is one of each. This is something to do with box nine is probably the most cluttered, isn't it? thing is, I just find Nabnaline so unintuitive. I mean, it is true to say, I think, from the instructions that, uh, let me just get the instructions again. We can't repeat a digit along a Nabna line, can we? No, digits cannot repeat. So this digit, uh, but it could go there. Uh, this digit can't go on its own line. So that digit is in one of four places. Hmm. Um, I don't know what to do with that. I, I also, unfortunately, doubt that it's anything to do with the, the blue line. Normally, when the only secret, such as it is, and it's not even a secret, it's just a comment, a brief aside that I'll make about a blue line, is that what we're typically trying to do is to find huge mismatches in the number of cells within boxes. So here the problem is that we've got a three cell sequence here, but it's we've got two cell sequences in the other two positions. So I mean, in extreme worlds, this this could be an eight nine pair, and these could add up to seventeen. I mean, I suppose these have to be at least six. If these were a one two three triple, it's true to say each of these dominoes adds up to at least six, but that means there's a a lot of freedom. We've got six as the minimum for these dominoes. 17 is the maximum. Um, right, so it can't be these. These are all disambiguating lines. I'm going to allege right now. So, um, maybe this box is where we're meant to look. At least this, this box has got no Nabna lines in it. That's fantastic. Um, So, right, so five is definitely not on the whispers line. So five is on one of these Ren bands, which means one of these Ren bands is not what I'll call an extreme Ren band. In other words, it couldn't get to one or nine. Whichever one of these has got five on it, it could go, it could go five, four, three, two, or it could go five, six, seven, eight, but it's never going to pick up an extreme digit. So the extreme digit Or digits are either going to be on them. Well, the problem is ex putting extreme digits on German whispers lines is a, is a fool's errand really because it doesn't restrict it. The most restricted digits are actually not extreme digits in um, in the sense of whispers. So if we think of midly digits like four and six, four and six could actually only go on this whisper sequence in these two positions because four and six only have one partner that's five away from them from a Sudoku perspective. So four would have to go with nine. Six would have to go with one. Ah, I don't see this yet. I have to say. Yeah, so putting ones and nines on here is not, not interesting is what I'm saying. One, one can go with six, seven, eight or nine. No, um, oh golly, I suspect this means I do have to think about the Nabna lines. If that had the five on it, if that, if this line had the five on it, that's not, not in, in these cells in box seven, that would put a five on this, this horseshoe Nabna line. And that would mean it couldn't have four or six on it, which is, ah, ah, okay. There's something, right, there's something going on. Uh, Yeah, there's definitely something going on between this line and this line. 
Um, well, there, I haven't quite thought this through, actually, but there are two things I'm noticing. The first is that there must be some commonality of digits between these two, uh, these two lines. So if we just highlight those lines for a moment. Now, there are nine cells altogether on these lines. So if there was no commonality, if this was one, two, three, four, five, and this was six, seven, eight, nine, that digit's impossible to, to put into the Sudoku because it couldn't be anything. It would be seen by all the different digits. But that means that there is an overlap between these lines. And we were just thinking of that, about that in the context of five. So if there is a five on both lines, there is a five on here. But they can't. They. Yeah, this is the bit I haven't quite. I haven't quite formulated in my mind. I want to say that they can't overlap in two positions. But yeah, because wouldn't that automatically put a consecutive pair on the Nabner? I feel that they, I feel like it would. Like if this was one, two, three, four, five, and this overlapped by two digits, surely that would mean this was four, five, six, seven. And four and five would be locked out of these squares, and four and five would be forced onto the Nabna, which won't work. Right. So that means that there, okay, it means that there is exactly one overlap. Between these two sequences. Now, what does that mean? So there are nine, there are nine cells on these Ren bands, which means there must be eight, because there's only one overlap, there must be eight different digits and one shared digit in these nine cells. Yeah, so there are eight different digits, one of which is repeated on the other Renban. So let's imagine if this was one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah, <laughs> okay, well, that's not one, two, three, four. Oh, that's it. Right, done it. Okay, right, so this is very clever. It's very clever, but not easy to... How long does that take me? 15 minutes. Good grief. Um, okay, so what I've just noticed is this sequence. I probably should have thought about this earlier, but these cannot be either all very low or all very high. And that's because of what it's going to do for my, my whispers line. Imagine this was one, two, three, four. And let's think about the nature of these digits. Now we know there are two highs and two lows. We don't know the order, but there must be two, two digits on this whisper line that are lower than five. And therefore selected from one, two, three, and four. Let's imagine it's those. You can see I've now got five digits in box seven selected from just four different numbers. So that won't work. Uh, and the same is obviously true if we made this six, seven, eight, or nine. So if we know that it's impossible to put one or nine on a four cell uh, pink line what digit must be on the pink line five and sorry that's bit I should have thought about that when we were thinking about this but now we can see that the common digit the one overlapping digit that exists between these two rem bands is five which means five is on this line which means four and six are not on this line and that's okay that's slightly strange <laughs> which strikes me as um, probably the way I was described at parties at, at university <laughs> that, that guy Simon he's slightly strange um, anyway slightly strange Simon what I'm thinking about there is that digit oh yeah okay this right there's two things i've thought about here then so that digit is 
I think it's a one or a nine is where my brain is going because these sequences overlap on five, don't they? So this one is either two, three, four, five or five, six, seven, eight. Well, let's imagine this was five, six, seven, eight for a moment. If this is five, six, seven, eight, this one, which is can only overlap with the five, so it cannot have six, seven or eight on it, is one, two, three, four and five. And if this, on the other hand, is two, three, four, five, then this, which can't have four on it now, because that's going to put a four on here with, along with the five, is going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what we're actually learning is that this is an extreme Remban. This has one or nine on it. This is a quite extreme Remban going in the other direction. So if this was five, six, seven, eight, nine, this would be uh, five, four, three, two, and vice versa. I, if that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, I can't remember. Is that what I said before? If that's one, two, three, four, five, this would be five, six, seven, eight. So this digit is the gap. It's the missing digit from, from one to nine in the sequence. So this is the extreme digit that it's not possible to put on really on this line. This line just misses meeting the other extreme digit. But what got me thinking about this square actually was the fact that I couldn't put four and six on this horseshoe because I can't, I can't put four four and six here can I because then this ren band couldn't have consecutive digits on it because it's got five on it it needs a four or a six on it but the same is true here this has got five on it so it needs four or six on it so there's like um a weird thingy going on which and by weird thingy I mean there's a four or a six in this domino and there's a four or a six in this domino. So the, the four and the six are sort of shared between those two dominoes in box one. That's almost interesting for the Ren band, you know. Because imagine there was a four here. Well, then we know that this line is going five, six, seven, eight which means these two squares can, it means it doesn't matter whether it's four or six here. These two squares can never include four, five or six. I mean, it's not very interesting, but it's just something I noticed. So, So don't we still have to be a bit careful with this Ren band though? Let me just think about that. If well, ah, I didn't mean to do that. What I wanted to do was to put two, three, four, and five in here. If this is two, three, four, and five, and I need two low digits on the horseshoe green line, yeah. So okay, okay. So. So the five on this line, it's not going to matter if we switch the polarity round, if we do that. Imagine this was the five. That won't work. Because these squares will now be selected from six, seven and eight. And there are not two high digits that are higher than five available to go on the uh, on this whispers line. So it couldn't, it cannot work like that. So instead... What are we learning then? We're learning that this is not five. There is a five in one of these. Which is, is that interesting? I don't know. This is two, three, four, five, or five, six, seven, eight. Let me just think about that again. So if this is five, six, seven, eight, all of the high digits in the world are going to be consumed in that sort of septomino um, because this line has got has got to have two of six seven eight nine on it and this has got to have two of six seven eight on it so this Renban has to have these squares would have to be from low polarity so either these are both low or these are both high.
and well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, hang on, let's get rid of this. So we know there's a five down here. We know that these squares are either low from one, two, three, four, or high from six, seven, eight, nine. I know both of those squares. Oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> right. Say to math as usual, making me feel like a plonker. Oh, Rodney, you plonker. Um, okay, look at these two digits here. Oh, I'm so. Oh, this is so annoying. Okay, these digits include a high and a low digit because they are of different colours on the whisper line. Now, how then could this Renban, which see these two squares see the whole of this Renban, how could this Renban be extreme? And by extreme, I mean, how could it be one, two, three, four, or six, seven, eight, nine? It cannot be those things. Because if it was, imagine, well, let's imagine this was six, seven, eight, nine. Which high, one of these is a high digit. Which high digit shall we make it? And the answer is it cannot be anything. Because obviously these tips see the whole of this Renban. So, what that means is that this Renban has a 5 on it. And if it has a 5 on it, that 5 is in that domino because it's not there because we've worked out um, that there's a 5 at the bottom of column 3. So now there's a 5 up there in one of two cells. Now, oh, this is on the Ren, uh, sorry, a Nabna thingy though. So that's perhaps less important. Uh, oh goodness me, okay. Hmm. Okay, well that's not actually done anything at all. I thought that was quite a good deduction. Uh, I was annoyed I didn't see it more quickly, but... Okay. Uh... Um, hmm. Let me think about this. So th what's the name? That digit completes a, so either, yeah, so whatever, if this was a one, these squares would be two, three, four, and five, wouldn't they? Yeah, because if this is a one, this is the other extreme. This would be nine, eight, seven, six, five. So these would be two, three, four, five. If this is nine, these are one, two, three, four, five, and this is five, six, seven, eight. So whatever that's so whatever these these are, they're putting pressure one way or the other on this domino. What I mean by that is if this is nine, these are selected from one, two, three, and four. Although not ah that why well, in fact that does it. That's wrong. Okay. That is wrong. Okay, so. Yeah, this is very clever. This is very clever stuff. It really, it's not, I don't think this is very easy actually, but it's, it's very clever stuff. So what I'm, what I'm noticing here is that I can view these digits as an, a set of extreme digits within the within the one to nine um, range. They're either one, two, three, four, five, or they're five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if they are five, six, seven, eight, nine, what do we know about this? We 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 said we had to sort of share out the four and the six, didn't we, between these dominoes? So if these are five, six, seven, eight, nine, these squares have to include a four and the six will be up there so let's look at that can that be can that be correct no because these digits ah these digits are from one two and three and that's just not big enough even if i make these a two three pair these cannot add up to only five there are three different digits here we know they add up to at least six so we can't do that that will not work and that's great because what that's going to do is tell us what this digit is. That has to be one, which means these squares are two, three, four. Ah! Oh dear, I'm getting all my all my um 
We know that one's not the five. The five lives down here. Um, now these squares are from six, seven, eight, nine, which means there's a four up here using our Nabna logic. We know this is the other extreme set of digits. So this is now five, six, seven, eight, nine. This square is two or three. These squares are two, three or four. And presumably, <laughs> he says, trying to work out what that means. Um, now we're going to, for our next trick, we are going to say that. I don't know. <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. Um, I know one of these is a six, don't I? So these don't include six. So these are very high indeed. So these have to be very high indeed. Ah, that's, that's done it. Right. So now look at these two. These are at least adding up to 15. So these are selected from six, seven, eight, and nine, because if we put five in here, the other digit would be 10. And look at that now. We've got a quintuple on five, six, seven, eight, nine in box three, the five of which is in the top row. So these squares don't include five. These squares are one, two, three, and four. Two of them are on a nabna. Don't know what that means. Um, Oh, there's a. Uh, have I broken the puzzle? Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't realise this. Right, because this has become a one. Now, I actually know that this Nabna line has to have two high digits on it. Um, you can see it, it's only got really what room for one low digit because two of the well three of the low digits are used in those three squares aren't they so we can only put one of two two actually it's, it's not four even there's one of two and three on this nabna there's a five on the nabna there's no six on the nabna so there's two digits from seven eight and nine so they must be in order to not be consecutive they must be seven and nine so this has got seven and nine on it, which means this is not seven and nine. This is six and eight, which means these squares haven't got eight on it, which means these squares add up to 16. Now there's only one way of making 16 in a domino, and that is with the number seven and nine. So these are both seven, nine pairs. There's no seven and nine in this triple. There is a seven and nine here now. This is just, I mean, it, it's like one of those dominoes, domino runs, you know, where you click the domino and it just sets off a chain of things that that, that happen all over the place. And that's what that's what this feels like. In fact, it even looks like it. These look like dominoes that are being toppled. Um, now, probably we can work these out now because they can't include any big. Di well, they can include eight. What if there's no eight on this line? It would be. 4, 5, 6, which is 15. 15 is not the same as 16. A knowledge bomb there from cracking the cryptic. So this, right, that's great. That, is that my, no, it's my second digit. So there's an 8 there on this line in order to allow it to add up to enough. So that's 8. That's 6. That's a 6 in one of these three squares. These, the other two digits here add up to eight don't they without using six or seven so these are three five eight look so there's no three on this nabna right so this nabna now these two digits can't be a one two pair because then that just breaks the rules of nabna nabna logic so there is a four on here which means there's no four up here This digit is a Sudokuable digit. I mean, it's outrageous being made to do Sudoku just 35 minutes into the Sudoku Zeta math. What are you thinking? Um, but now these digits we can pencil mark. They are one, four, I was gonna say one, four, seven. No, they're not, are they? They're one, four and six. So now, 
Uh, now that's fine. <laughs> now that's fine. Look, we've got one and four on here. So there's no five on here. These digits are from six, seven, eight, and nine. They're both, they're all big. And... Oh, probably we can do... So let's, let's, let's pencil mark this Navna then. So it's got two on it. It's got five on it. It's got seven on it. It's got nine on it. So these are not five. These are not two. Right, so there's definitely a five in this domino, and there's definitely a two in this domino by Sudoku. At least I feel slightly more confident that we'll be able to finish the puzzle now, because we seem to have managed to break into it. Ah, there's a five in here, look, so these don't include... Well, that... Oh, where's the five? The five is only there, I haven't realised that. Uh, that's probably not doing very much. Um, we've got an awful lot of high digits in row four now. There's got to be a high digit on this two cell whisper line. Um, hmm, not seeing it actually. Sorry, right, let's, let's take stock. What do we now know? Uh, we've got a lot of pencil marks in the grid. Uh, I don't know where to look. It's bizarre, isn't it? Or may, well, maybe it's just me, but I, I'm looking at this and I have not got a Scooby-Doo. I don't really have a good feeling. Can I do something with these digits now? Oh yeah, I suppose I know. I know there's a one on this um, on the, on this whisper line now, don't I? Because I need to have two low digits on it, and two of the low digits are consumed by the bottom of this this renban. So one of them is a one, and the other is whatever the oh the other is that digit actually. So that digit appears on this whisper line somewhere. Uh, I'm going to notate that somehow. I'll put yellow there. Uh, ooh. Actually, maybe I'll get rid of my, my highlighting. I'll do this and then I'll make that yellow like that. Because that digit has to go down there. So yeah, okay. So we know these are high now, don't we? Yeah, because um, there are two low digits here, which are one and this digit, and then all the other low digits live here. So these are from six, seven, eight, and nine. But they can't be nine, because it's a four cell Remban that does have a five on it. So these are from six, seven, and eight. Well then, oh, no, is that true? No. What I was about to say is nonsense, so I will not. <laughs> I will not utter what my brain was thinking. Um, so if these are six, seven, and eight, do I know what these can't include? Sevens. I knew they couldn't include nines. If. Golly, I don't know. Is this in some way? <laughs> is this in some way obvious? Uh, I don't. I really don't know. Actually, if I know there's a high digit in this domino, there's a high digit here. That's two high digits. Three high digits. But if this was eight, say, if this was eight, there would be seven on the ren band, and that would have to go here. So this would be eight and seven. The two high digits down there would be six and nine. Six would have to go next to the one, so six would be in one of these two. Uh, 
Oh, hang on. There's something. There's a problem there. Right. This. Right. This is. Oh no. That is clever. It's clever. It's much clever and much simpler than I'm making it. If this is a seven-eight pair, the world breaks. Um, and that is because. Where do I put six on the ren band? I, I, so I've got to be the thing. The thing we've got to be very careful about here is putting six into either of these squares in box seven. And that's because of six's monogamous nature. If this is six, these both have to be ones now because that's the only valid digit that will work. So instead, instead of that, yeah, so right. So the way to think about this is where is the six? There must be a six on this ren band, mustn't there? Because it's got a digit that's one of these digits is at least six. <laughs> Therefore, it's definitely got a six on it um, because it has a five on it. Now, if the six was here, we've just said that's going to put a six by Sudoku down here because it can't repeat on its line. And that's going to break this whisper line. So the six is in one of those positions. I'm sure there was a better way of seeing that, but, but that is true. OK, and that, that well, that gives us another digit because now I can't put eight here. Because if I put if this is a six eight pair, I must have a seven on the rem band, and that's going to break this seven nine here. Can't put seven in either of these squares. So in fact, in fact, that is a six seven pair, which means these digits are either five and eight or five and four, depending on how well, depending on things that Zeta Math has figured out that I haven't yet. Okay, but if these are six and seven. The high digits on this whisper are now 8 and 9. Uh, 8 and 9 are very annoying digits in the sense they put hardly any pressure on the low digits. If we knew there was a 6 or 7 on here, that would be really very cool. Yeah, that's how cool I am. <laughs> um, so, hang on. Hang on now. Because, so, if, what about if that's high? Isn't that going to give me a problem? 1, 2... Three, four. No, because this could be four, five. Ah, no, that didn't that didn't work. I thought that would break immediately, but it doesn't. I don't think. Wow. Okay. So my brain is telling me it's going to be something to do with this Renban. Well, I think there are things we can say about this Ren Ban, actually. I don't think I can put 9 on this, can I? If this has got 9 on it, these squares are from 6, 7, 8, and 9. And there's too many of those in this row now. So, oh, ah, whoopsie, I didn't mean to do that. So there is no, there's definitely no 9 on this Ren Ban. I might be able to say the same for 8. If there's eight on this Remban, we've worked out it can't be it can't have nine on it. So it would be eight seven whoopsie eight seven six five. And that also doesn't work because again we've got the same problem. So so there is no nine and there's no eight. So these are four digits that are selected from the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So there is now a 4 on this Ren Ban. But do we know more than that? Not sure. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. We know, right. In this row, we know that the 8 and the 9 are not on this Ren band. So the 8 and the 9 are in these squares. So this Nabna, or the start of this Nabna, doesn't have 8 or 9 on it. Ah. Oh. 
Oh, goodness. it's going to be this. It's going to be what we did over here again. <laughs> it's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, bobbins. Right. Um, it's exactly the same thing. I just didn't see it this way round. Um, these digits on this whisper have to have two high digits in them and two low digits. So this can't be one, two, three, and four again. It's the same point. If this was one, two, three, and four, it's only possible now to pick whichever digit is not used, which will be this one on this on this whisper line. But I've got to have two low digits here. So this is not a low whisper, which means it's not one, two, three, four. So it definitely, because it has a four on it, it now has a five on it as well. Now. Okay. So it doesn't have one on it anymore. So one in so it one in row seven is now in one of those squares, I think. Phone's buzzing at me. Oh hang on, let me just read this. Okay, that's fine. Um it's actually done nothing, has it? So these squares are from 2, 3, 4, and 5. But does that mean I know this digit? Ah, <laughs> might do. Hang on. Um, well, it does, a, it does a little bit, doesn't it? Because we've got the same trick going on. I can't make these, these three digits here. If these didn't include 5... They would be two, three, and four, and I couldn't put two low digits on this on this whisper line. So there is a five here, which means that is not five, which means this is not five. So this is a moderate digit. Five has been relegated to the bottom of column three. Um, now, so that in theory might be able to be six if this was three four five i would put one and two on this line no that's wrong okay that's good that's about the first time i think i've seen anything quickly in this puzzle that is not six because if this was six these two squares would be from seven eight nine and they're on a navna so they would be seven and nine and that would break that square bingo right so this digit now has to be it has to be from the two three four five family it's, we know it's not five so it's now two three or four and this digit has to find a home on this german whispers line that must be right so we, because effectively what we've now worked out is there's two low digits in these squares which can't go on this whisper so the other two digits one of which seems to be this one because these two cannot include this because the remban doesn't include a repeated digit so that digit goes in one of those two squares and that's quite interesting because that gets me that digit i think and the reason i think it gets me this digit is that there is another low digit that I have to put on this whispers line, and that is the digit one. Where's that going? Well, it can't go next to another low digit without breaking German whispers rules. So if this was the low, if this was this digit, it would go here. And if this was the low digit, it would go here. So there is a one in one of those squares, which means that digit is a four. That digit is a one. This is no longer a four. So now, Right, so now there is definitely a 4 in this row, which means this is not 4. This is brilliant. It's quite brilliant. Um, this is 2 or 3, so if... Do we care? Well, we might do a bit. 3 would be better. It can only go next to 8 or 9. And 3 would be ideal if it went here. Which, actually, that doesn't work. Uh, but it could still be two. The reason three doesn't work there is this would be an eight, nine pair. And that would plonk eight and nine on this whisper right into the bottom row where they'd be next to each other. And they wouldn't be five different, would they? So if this if this is low, it's got to be a two. And it's got to include... 
Well, two. One of this. One of these would be a seven. One. Oh, nearly. One. One in this box is nearly. Uh, it's nearly on the Nabna. That's not actually very useful, is it? That would just rule two out of the Nabna. Um, is that that digit's the same, isn't it? That digit's the blue digit as well, I think. Because this digit doesn't appear in this triple, so it must appear there in row seven. So, and it also must appear here in box nine. So this digit is in one of those three cells in row nine. Golly gosh, okay. Okay, but again, these two digits, it's a bit like over here, except it's a different type of line. These two digits, we know that the whisper includes two low digits, and this, in, and this set of digits includes all the other low digits. So these digits on the Nabna are from 6, 7, 8, and 9. That one is not 7 or 9 by Sudoku. So that is 6 or 8. So that is not 7. Um... And now there is a 6 in one of these squares, because they can't be an 8-9 pair. Which means 6 in row 8 is in one of those two cells. It means we can't put 5 on this Nabna thingy anymore. So 5 is in one of those cells. Don't know if that's in any way useful. Oh, it is. Yeah, this is it's beautiful, actually. It's really, it's surprising and very clever again. Okay, so now we know those digits, I think. Because, look, these two digits, they can't interfere that we've got two high digits here and they're not five. So they're from one, two, three, and four, except there's a one already appeared. So they're now from two, three, and four, and they've got to be not consecutive. So they're two and four. Now that's not four. There is, there is a two on this Ren band line. So there is a three on this Ren band line because it's either one, two, three, or it's two, three, four. And therefore, well, that's not three, that's a tiny deduction, but I think we can probably do better than that. Or not. Um, oh, come on, Simon, what does that mean? Uh, that means this whisper needs the other low digit. So this dig the digit on here, oh, that's it, that's it. Okay, so what we've got to do now, because this, this Ren ban has two and three on it, this whisper needs a low digit, which is one or four, and it's not four, so it's one. So there is a one on here, which is definitely doing things, isn't it? So one, six, seven, eight, nine are the options. This square is a six. Okay, that immediately takes six out of here. Um... So these squares have become a 2, 3, 4 triple, which means that digit is a 1, that digit is a 4. We know there's a 1 in here. Let's actually make sure that we don't miss that. Yeah, that gets me the 1 in, in box 8. I get an 8, 9 pair here. Yeah, okay. Uh, look at these four squares now as a, as a unit. One of them is 7, 8 or 9. And the others, the other of seven, eight, and nine are in these two squares. So there is a virtual seven, eight, nine triple in this column, which means that square is not eight. So that square, oh, this does it, look. So this square is from three and five by Sudoku, and there's already a three on this line. So that's five, that's three. 
five. So these are from six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now I've got a quadruple in row four from somewhere on six, seven, eights, and nines. Um, which means the rest of this row is from ones, twos, threes, and fours. So that's one, two, three, or four. These are one, two, three, and four. Oh, come on. That's, we're so close, I think, to cracking it now. I've got a very pencil marked grid for me, which is completely discombobulating. Um, what does this mean? I suppose, actually, I'm going to pencil mark these digits. That's what I'm going to do next. I have got three, five, six, and seven to place. Uh, all right, I've got a three in this column. So these are from these are from five, six, and seven. The six is have, having to be down here. So these are not sixes. These are from three, five, and seven. No, I've got a six in this row. Let's let's keep going with Sudoku. Oh, I see. Right. So the point is, this is six. I didn't see that, but that that seems to be the point, because I've got six on this line. Okay. Uh, but that's still um, okay. That's that's good, but it's not it's not enough. I don't think. Ah, can I get? Oh, I nearly can. I really nearly can. Um, seven on this line looks interesting because. Oh, has this been available for a while, actually? I can see there is a 7 um, on the Whispers line. And if seven, if 7 is here, this has to be a 1-2 pair in that order. And if 7 is here, it has to be a 1-2 pair in that order. And if 7 is here, it's less good. That would be a one. And this would be a high digit, which would be eight or nine. Bother. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do that. So we may have to think again, I'm afraid. Um, how do we do that, though? What should we do next? We could. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know where to look. I don't, it's going to be one of these silly lines, is it? Uh, probably. There's got to be one low and one high digit in this domino. Can we do something good with that? If this, well, okay, so then we're going to have three low digits. Depends what this digit is. If that wasn't five, then this would, this couldn't be low. It would have to be high. But... Uh, if, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Is it something to do with? Oh, I don't know at all. If that, oh, hang on. If that's four, would that make things tricky? Well, only in the sense that if it was four, the four would have to go in one of those two positions. I do know there's definitely eight and nine down here, don't I? So I know there's one high digit for sure in this domino and two high digits there. Which 
which is, oh, that's really close to being very powerful. How do we do this then? What's the, what's the trick? What's the trick, Zeta? What have you done? Um, is there, may, maybe there might be restrictions like this can't be four nine or something. Oh, that can't be four. Well, we should take everything we can get. Just, but that's just Sudoku. One is in one of these. So if this was one, this would be two, three. It would be two or three, wouldn't it? That would be quite good. Oh, there's got to be a low digit here. There's got to be a low digit here. Again, it depends. I can't quite see how to resolve all of the three, five, and seven stuff here. It feels, it does feel under pressure a bit though. What about, hmm, don't know, <laughs> I'm stuck. Okay, let's try this row again. We did work out that there had to be, or maybe this was another place where we did this logic, but I can see here. Yeah, no, we did think about this because this, this is what enabled me to work out this square was not a six. But what I could have done when I saw that is I could have said, okay, well, there must be a six in this domino because otherwise it would be a seven, nine pair due to Navin logic. So that square is a seven, eight or a nine, therefore. Is that useful? Well, maybe actually it's not. So this has come down very slightly in, in terms of the panoply of things it can be. There is no seven on here anymore, I suppose. So this becomes six, eight, nine. So seven in this box is now in one of these three positions. Now, if I could rule it out, or frankly, or in the German Whisper, you can see that the sevens are really going to operate together in a quite a cool way. If seven is here, it has to be a two seven pair. Now, is that broken? I don't know, actually. I'm unsure. I mean, it would be, I mean, would it be very powerful if this was two seven? Obviously it would give me this digit. Hmm, I don't know, it might, it might be very powerful. I can't quite see. Let's try. Oh, maybe coloring. Maybe that digit's the same as that, isn't it? These two digits are the same. Oh, that's it. Oh, it's that simple. Oh, I haven't been focusing on this at all, but that's great. That's absolutely great because this is going to do everything. Right, so this digit, I think it's right, isn't it? That's got to be there. So by Sudoku, it can't be here. So by Sudoku, it's here and we know its nature is low. So that's two or three. This is one. Um, well, I said it's going to do, well, it, it does something. It gets rid of one from there. So there's now one down here. So this group, right, that's, that is interesting because these squares now have to include a low digit that's not one. So there is a two, three or a four floating about in this domino. And that pairs up with that and that to make a two, three, four triple which means that square is five, which means that square is a seven, which means that square is a five. This is ridiculous. That square is a three. Ah, this, well, okay, that, I was going to say that must be the same as that. That's not true. You could put three on the line. So I've got to be careful there. 
That's not 7 anymore. That's going to give us the 7 in this row. So that's 7, that's 9. Um, oh, I'm excited now. I think we might be able to finish. Come on. How do we do this? That square is A not 5 and B not 3. So that's a 2, 4 pair in this row. And we know there's this floating triple. So there's an 8 or a 9 in one of these. This square, yeah, where's the 7 in this box? It's got to go in the corner. No song for you. This is 8 or 9. That's, ah, that's good. That's not 7 now. So we now know that this is the 2, 7 pair in column 8. So that gives us a 3, a 3, a 3, a 3. Oh, so that was that was the digit. I don't think we could have got that before, but it did turn out to be true that that was the digit. Uh, that's a two, so that's this is a five naked single. So this is a two four pair naked single, and there's a two here. So this is two, this is four, and now that's not two by the dint of this having a two on it. How long is this? I'm over an hour. I'm not. I'm not actually that surprised. This this has felt quite challenging. Um, six, eight, nine. This is eight or nine. It can't be six. And it sees nine. So that's eight. That's six in the corner. That's nine. So that's six. Then we worked that out before, didn't we? That becomes eight. That's eight. That's five. So these squares now. Um, that's a six. And that's a nine okay so where is six in this box it's got to go there which means that's six and that's seven we have pause for breath these squares are now a one seven pair which means i get the seven and the nine at the top of the grid i get the nine and the eight at the bottom of the grid how do I do this two fourth? How do I do these two four shenanigans at the bottom? Not sure. These ah, that's not three by Sudoku. These are oh, I see. <laughs> look at this. Right, these are one four and five. Well, we can't put four and five on a nabna. So this tiny little domino nabna here is telling us there's a one on it, which means that square must be a four, which means actually it's a one five pair. Four comes out of here, four comes out of here. Um, don't know what that means. One five here gives us the eight at the top. So that becomes a six, eight, nine pair here. Um, two, four pair here. Okay. That's probably important, but I can't see how to resolve it. So we might have to go and have a look elsewhere. This must be done somehow. So, oh, that's not eight anymore. Do I know? I know one of these is a five, don't I? But. Oh, golly, I don't know. I'm stuck. Um, oh, no, I'm not. By Sudoku, that is an 8. Okay, well, that's huge. So that's a 5. So 8 is removed from these squares and shifts over to the left side, which means 9, because this there's an 8 in one of these, 9 must be in one of these, and that gives us this digit. So that's 7. These two squares are a two nine pair, which gives us this digits nine, this digit seven. And we've still got ones, twos, threes, and fours to put in. How is this, this must be done? I just can't see why. Um, okay, here is that right, what I'm about to say. It is right, I think. Yeah, okay, this digit cannot be four, I'm going to claim. And that, the reason I think that's right 
is is because I've got nine on the right hand side of the whisper. This is a really nice point again. If if this was four, I've got to put four somewhere here. But four needs to shelter itself on a whisper by being next to a nine. But if the nine is here or here, where would the four go? It would have to go into column one, wouldn't it? And that would require a second nine. So I think this is not four. Uh, which actually, given that I've got a three here, means that's two and that's four. That's four and that's two. So now it's a two that lives in one of these squares. And this two is that's doing some things. Look, two, seven, seven, one, one, five. That's four. This is done now. That's two. That's three. So this is a one three pair. That is a four. That that's a four. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight losing its vision. Ah, there we go. Finally, I think we've we've resolved this whisper. It's the last thing. Because that seems to put a one here, which means that must be the two. That must be the eight. That must be the nine. That resolves the bottom corner. It resolves the top there. Good grief. That is very, very it's fast what a fascinating puzzle better double click all the threes double click all the twos just so we've got a complete picture click tick yes oh okay so it's we doesn't know that that was the solution the solution is not in the software okay so i will have to i'll have to go away and check um that this looks right but if it is right um Hopefully there will be a uh, solution embedded in the software by the time this video goes live later and you'll be able to see whether you get the same answer that I've just got. Say to Math, that was, that was very, very, very good again. Um, yeah, it's, it's re really beautiful how you can make these digits dance with that this part was very clever. Just the simple interaction with the, the Nabna line and not being able to have more than one overlap. It took me about 15 minutes to find that. And then and then you can you could do all sorts of things from there. We, we could we deduce some things about this line and eventually oh yeah and then we, eventually we could work out the parity. We could work out loads of stuff about this region sum line. And all of this stuff on the right I don't claim to understand even now. <laughs> But it did seem to all resolve itself logically once I managed to connect the dots correctly. So I, I, I took the crosswalk. I probably made it to the other side without being um, polaxed by a lot of uh, large vehicles coming in my direction. Uh, and I really enjoyed the puzzle. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.